There are lots of people think that the more Arsenal passes these kinds of tests, the more they start to earn title winning cred or credential. And people think that if they win a few more of these games, we need to start taking them seriously. But this is another test. Another test. Liverpool presents a different type of opposition to Spurs. Can Arsenal overcome this? Um, yes, they are favourites for this game. Um, I think they are, for me, they are overwhelming favourites for this game. Wow. If you look at how the two teams are at this, part, at this point in the season, Liverpool haven't impressed in any big game that they've, they've been involved in this season. And I feel they are there for the taking. If there was any, ever a time to face Liverpool, it is now. Ask Man United, they'll tell you. This is the best <laughs> time to face Liverpool. And um, look, for, for us now, from an Arsenal point of view, it's very, a bit frustrating they couldn't beat Man United because they are facing the big boys at the perfect time in the season. Man United were not on form. They faced Man United. Unfortunately for them, they couldn't win their game. Tottenham Hotspur had struggled. Um, they had lost in Europe. Then the uh, Queen's um, uh, unfortunate death. The Premier League went on a break. We came back. They were, they were stuttering a bit. Then they faced Arsenal. They lost. They've gone on to Europe. They've gone to draw. So we can tell that Tottenham's form is not the best start there. And Arsenal dominated and beat them. Mm -hmm. Liverpool themselves are not on form. So in as much as on paper, they are facing big teams. Mm -hmm. They are facing big teams who are not at, the, at top form at okay. this particular okay. point okay. in time. And Arsenal themselves are in top form. But it's perfect. They have to win. Because it doesn't just give you three points. It's also confidence and belief. This is where Arsenal is supposed to be. If you know the football club, if you respect the football club, Arsenal is not supposed to be struggling for top four. Arsenal is supposed to be competing for titles. That is the Arsenal I grew up knowing and fearing. And it is nice to see they are in this position. But when you are being chased by Manchester City, it's not just about beating Leicester and beating Bournemouth. When you come up against the big boys, mm. you also have to show up and beat them. And I feel Arsenal are in the position to beat this Liverpool team. Liverpool just seemed a bit disjointed for me. You can tell they've tried a number of different things. If you look um, in midweek in their Champions League game, they played like a two-top. It was Klopp is trying things. And when you see managers chopping and changing starting 11s, changing systems, changing formations, it can tell you they are confused. And he hasn't quite figured out his, his, his team yet. And look, this Arsenal team is, is, is playing perfect football. I watched the Europa League game yesterday and I was surprised because Bodo Glimt are a very good side. Mm -hmm. Arsenal fielded a changed 11, different players, but it was the same intensity, that brand of football that um, we've come to know this season under Mikel Arteta, creating chances for fun. He scored three goals. It was a delightful game to watch. And you look at the squad depth, you look at how they are playing, you look at the confidence that is, that is brewing in the team. And I can dare say, if something happens with Gabriel Jesus right now, Arsenal will not suffer because Edin KTI is there. And he's confident and he's scoring. He's getting into good positions. Um, you look at Kieran Tierney, who played yesterday. Brilliant. We saw him coming for Zinchenko a couple of weeks ago. For, I think, two weeks when Zinchenko was injured. Same results. Arsenal mm -hmm. were still winning football matches. So, this is the point. This is the, 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 the time where you need to stand up and be counted. Get that win over another big rival because now it will be two big teams in a row. And then Ateta doesn't need to tell the players that they can challenge. They themselves will start feeling that they can do it. Because trust me, after Man United, Tottenham, Liverpool, the only person to beat left is, is Man, Man City. City yeah. That's it. And if you can conquer two out of the three so far, and even the Man United game, you look at it in fine detail and tell yourself that you should have won that game if you had been more clinical. It's not like Man United outplayed you and won. Mm. No. You should have won that game. It gives you that belief. And... Another thing, when Arsenal goes back to the last time they faced Man City at the Emirates last season, where they went down to that last-minute Rodri winner with 10 men, the sort of performance they fielded that day. And that was at a, a period where they had just started gaining form and then they met this resurgent Man City side and they st were still able to stand their ground. At this point in time, if this Arsenal team meets Man City, it would be a battle. So you need to get that belief by beating Liverpool and beating them quite handsomely. Because I think this is, it's a, it's a ripe time to face Liverpool. And you see, for us now, if they go back and they look at the results in the past few seasons against Liverpool, look, they need to beat them and beat them good. Because Liverpool have really embarrassed us now. There's been 5 0, there's been 4 1, there's been 4 0. Liverpool have been spanking them for fun. Left, right, centre, beating, cup competitions, league, yeah, yeah, anytime yeah. Liverpool, especially Jota. Anytime they meet <laughs> us now, Jota and Firmino, just tearing them left, right, centre. So I feel. For Arsenal, there's something to play for. 
to assert yourselves as the dominant team in the league as it stands. Because interestingly enough, if Arsenal have that ego of a big team, why is it that they are top of the league and people are still talking about Man City and Haaland and Man City? I don't know. They should be talking about you. Because ask yourself, which big team has Man City faced this season? Aside Man, Aside United. Man United. No, no, this is Arsenal's third big game of the season and they are still on top of the league. So if you are talking about the, the, the strength of opposition that teams have faced, Arsenal have actually had more tests than Man City this season. So then you should ginger them on in this game against Liverpool. Because trust me, it's not like I'm looking down on Liverpool, but the, the, the team is in tatters as it stands. They are there for the taking. As to whether they can respond because it's a big okay, team, we'll I doubt it because of what happened against Man United. I just feel like this is the time where Arsenal should take advantage and beat Liverpool. Mm. I'm sure it will happen. Yeah, just quickly on this encounter, yeah. on encounter Daniel seems to think Arsenal are going into this. They are playing Liverpool at a perfect time. Yeah. They, you can actually beat Liverpool. Just quickly, what should Liverpool do in this game? Uh, I, th um, I think they should do what um, they did in the, in the midweek game in the Champions League, um, ring in the changes. Shake things up. If, if you don't shake things up and you go with this inertia uh, up against um, Arsenal, they, they will be beaten. They will lose that game. <laughs> they need, uh, judging club needs to shake things up. Shake things up tactically. Shake things up uh, personnel-wise. So tactically. You keep on playing full back. Um, Trent Alexander Arnold as, a, as an orthodox right full back. But the guy doesn't operate as an orthodox right full back. He's always attacking, leaving space in behind. And the guy who is taxed to cover up for him doesn't have the legs like he used to mm. anymore. Very That's relevant. Jordan Henderson. Jordan Henderson. That's Jordan Henderson in midfield. Yeah. Um, Gigi Van Alden used to do it. Um, he's no longer there. Jordan Henderson doesn't have the legs anymore. That's why consistently... That side of the, of, of the pitch is exploited. We knew it was an issue. It was exploited in previous years. But now it's too, it's too glaring. So he needs to bring in the changes Change. from a tactical point of view. Play that three-man back line. Have your Joel Matip. Have Van Dijk in there. Bring in Joe Gomez as that third defender. He, he excels on the right side. He plays as a right back anyway. He can play as a left right back anyway. I see. Have him as that uh, right-sided defender in the three-man back line. Use Trent Alexander as a wing back so that you, 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 go, you lay into his strength going forward, but you do not overly task him with defensive uh, responsibilities that he constantly feels at. Mm. And that's, that's one way of handling it. Personal wise, in the middle, get younger. You need mobility in that midfield. Fabinho is a constant, but you need a younger leg right next to him. Jordan Henderson is not the answer. Thiago Alcantara is a composer, he'll compose the game. Uh, once you have control, a little bit of a, a lead in there, have him come off the bench. Start to have Elliott. You need mobility in that midfield oh. if you really want to contest or compete against Thomas Partey and Granit Xhaka in that midfield. Okay, all right. We'll see how it plays out. Arsenal v Liverpool at the Emirates over the weekend. It should be fun.